Hi, I'm Jen, and welcome to Christian Fire Poppy. Today, we are going to take a look at a general conference countdown that was started by President Nelson himself using hidden symbols and messages that he's been giving for the last seven months leading up to general conference spring of 2024. When we use numbers, we are using symbols, and it is only when we transfer them to life that they become actualities. President Nelson's pattern of repeating the key word of his talk seven times for seven months in a row on social media. Now, when I say talk, what I mean is a message that he posts on social media, and he has consistently been posting a message for the last seven months. This pattern of sevens began the month before General Conference of October 2023, and the first key word that he repeated seven times was the word conference. So I put it together as so you can see with your own eyes, this pattern of seven that has been occurring for the past seven months, starting in September before General Conference 2023. You can see that he uses the word conference seven times. In October, he uses the phrase think celestial seven times. In November, he uses the word prayers seven times. These are all posts on Facebook if you go to his Russell M. Nelson Facebook page. And then in December, he uses the various names of Christ seven times. In January, he uses the word marvel seven times. And in February, he uses the word love seven times. So this is actually something that Jared on Christian Homestead channel has pointed out and talked about in previous videos. I just did an interview with him and we were talking about how we were really looking forward to hearing his seventh message on Easter. And we assumed that there would be a keyword that he would repeat seven times. So you can imagine my surprise when the obvious keyword he used and repeated was joy. This was the theme of the Easter message on Easter day of 2024. If you go to his post, you can watch this video and it highlights the word joy, but the word joy was used nine times, not seven times. So it broke the pattern of sevens which to me is really highlighting this number nine. Now I'm going to show you how I've already talked about and noticed how the number nine is highly connected to the upcoming eclipse. So I find it very interesting that this message and pattern was started with the word conference and it's ending with a soon to occur general conference in just a week. The day after general conference ends, there's an eclipse that is highly linked to the number nine. Not only that, but I find it very significant that the message was one minute and 44 seconds long. The number 144 generally reminds me of the 144,000 that were sealed in their foreheads before the destructions happened, but we'll get to that soon. So this pattern of seven, it started before conference in 2023 and continued until the message right before the next conference in 2024. So this last message broke the expected pattern of seven with the nine. So let's take a look at the number nine. The number nine is a Hebrew symbol of judgment. Nine is therefore the number of finality or judgment. One example is in the ninth year of the prophet Hosea that the king of Assyria destroyed the capital city. So nine, the fruit of the spirit is in nine forms to judge the flesh, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentle, goodness, etc. There are nine fruits of the spirit and the list goes on and on. If you just Google the number nine, biblical significance. You can find a lot more information on that. 
So the reason I think of the number nine in conjunction with the solar eclipse coming up on April 8th is that there is a solar eclipse the day after General Conference, and it is the 99th day of the year. This year, the, our current prophet, President Nelson, happens to be 99 years old. This eclipse finishes marking nine holy church history sites in the path of totality. And this total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024, will be the ninth total solar eclipse since 1776, when America was first established. I also find it interesting that Nineveh has been linked to this eclipse. And we know in the scriptures it says, No sign will be given except the sign of Jonah. And Jonah preached to Nineveh, or Nineveh. Kind of an interesting part. A part of that word is nine in Nineveh. We also know that in Paleo-Hebrew, nine is tet. And it looks like a cross or an X marks the spot in the eclipse. The path of totality over the two great American eclipses in 2017 and the upcoming one form an X marks the spot over America. Let's just take a quick review of this eclipse and how it is linked to Jonah and Nineveh. Well, according to Assyrian writings cited by Wiseman, the Ninevites would see a solar eclipse as a precursor to God's judgment. The king will be deposed and killed, and a worthless fellow will seize the throne. Rain from heaven will flood the land. The city walls will be destroyed. Now, we have many Assyrian writings helping us to know that this is how they felt as a culture about what an eclipse meant at the time of Jonah. So Jonah would have preached to the people, and if they had a solar eclipse that we know happened at about that time, that makes sense that that would help them because they actually did listen and repent. So we know that the casting of lots fell on Jonah for not sharing the gospel message of repentance with Nineveh. And in Jonah 2, 7, it says, When my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee into thine holy temple. So kind of interesting how Donald Wiseman has speculated that the eclipse took place around when Jonah arrived in Nineveh and urged the people to repent, otherwise the city would be destroyed. This would explain the dramatic repentance of the people of Nineveh as described in the book of Jonah. So you can see right here at the beginning of the eclipse, there is a city named Jonah. And we have a lot of Ninevehs near this eclipse path in this direction, two that are in the very dead center of the path of totality and others that are close by. So if you're wondering about the 144 and its significance, you might think, well, the length of the message, that's just a coincidence. That was not on purpose, but we actually know from history, Sherry Du pointed out very specifically that present Nelson sometimes gives an exact specification for how long he wants his videos to be. And obviously, with his last seven messages in a row, he has been very purposeful in his use of a word being repeated seven times. And that word is always basically the theme of his message. So President Nelson has done a lot of these things. I've noticed even when he did the hear him challenge before the big 2020 general conference, that was exactly 40 days before general conference. So let's take a look at what Sherry Dew says about how President Nelson picks the length of his messages. He told us the exact day and time the video should be released and even how long it should be. I had never heard President Nelson be so specific about communication details. But as he spoke, I knew that I was witnessing a prophet act on revelation. All right, so 144, let's take a look at the 144,000 and then what we can learn from the scriptures. What does it say about them? Well, in Doctrine and Covenants 77 9, it says, What is the significance of the angel from the east sealing the servants of God? 
The four angels who are given power over the earth are kept from sending forth desolations upon the earth until God's servants are seals in their foreheads. The prophet Joseph Smith taught that this sealing signifies sealing the blessing upon their heads, meaning the everlasting covenant, thereby making their calling and election sure. And in Doctrine and Covenants 7711, it asks the question, who are the 144,000? The response is, before the Lord shall come, there is to be a great work among the nations. The ten tribes will have to come forth and come to this land to be crowned with glory in the midst of Zion, by the hands of the servants of God, even the children of Ephraim. And 12,000 high priests will be elected from each of these ten tribes, as well as from the scattered tribes, and sealed in their foreheads, and will be ordained and receive power to gather out of all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people, as many as will come unto the general assembly of the church of the firstborn. I copy and pasted each of these from the church website. We also see in Revelation 14.1, it reads, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him stood a hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. They are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Now I find a, I found a parallel scripture to look into this no guile aspect, and in John 1, 44, 1 verse 47, Jesus proclaims this about Nathanael. So Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? So he's meeting Jesus for the first time. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. So Nathaniel was quick to believe. He had a lot of faith. He was not a skeptic. He was a believer to his core. No guile within him. For looking at the idea of first fruits, I find it pretty interesting that there are 40 days between the eclipse and the first fruits Pentecost holiday. So the Feast of Pentecost, this is a Christian holiday, and it's known as the first fruits of God's harvest. So Pentecost serves as a reminder that God grants his Holy Spirit to the first fruits of his spiritual harvest. So we have some pretty interesting timing for the April 8th, 2024 eclipse it is the day after general conference weekend, which is the time for holy gathering. It is on also on the Hebrew New Year day, Nisan 1. And in Exodus 12, 1, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of month. And then, of course, last but not least, there are 40 days between eclipse and panic moss. So that is a pretty interesting connection and it will be fun to watch the days and to see what happens. So I encourage you to go to Facebook and go to President Nelson's page and listen to the message that he put out on Easter. I found it kind of interesting that he began it talking about wars and nation against nation. He also mentioned corruption and things. So it started out with uh, an, an acknowledgement of the complications, the dangers, the escalation of problems around the world. But then he pivots and he compares it to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And the word that he focuses on is joy. So he talks about some pretty difficult things, including war, and then links that to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ was able to endure the cross for joy. And so as we continue and we look at all the things happening in the world, that is our prescription. 
that is the remedy, that's the palm in Gilead, is the joy that comes from Jesus Christ, no matter what is happening around us in our lives, no matter how hard, how difficult, how scary, no matter what's going on, we can rely on our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we can have joy despite our circumstances. And I'm so grateful for my Savior, Jesus Christ, and that beautiful gift of joy, especially on Easter Day. And thanks for joining me today. Let's bloom despite the doom and gloom like true fire poppy. A Zion field of many fire poppies will reduce erosion after world chaos fires. Join us for more fiery passion and preparedness as we fly in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Don't forget to join the goal to finish reading the Book of Mormon by April 8th or read the Book of Mormon every day until April 8th. We have one more week, so jump in and join us and get reading that Book of Mormon.